When you installed the Easy Stitch software, you should have noticed some additional editing tools um, down here. When this is initially installed, the, this toolbar will default down to your left toolbar. If you want to go ahead and adjust that, you can just uh, move it by unlocking your toolbar. So if I right click here, unlock my toolbar, and then I can physically drag this. I prefer to have it up here personally. Um, these are my easy digitize editing tools. I also on this computer have my easy gem rhinestoning software on here. These three first buttons are for that, so we're not going to cover that. We're just going to go over our embroidery ones. I can still use all of my regular vector editing tools to edit my actual vector shapes, but these are going to be specifically for editing stitches. The first button here we have is our beads edit tool. This is, allows us to see where the stitch object will start and stop and allows us to change that. Okay, let's go ahead and click on, I'm going to click on this shape right here. Let's click on our beads edit tool. The green bead is where the object will start stitching. The red bead is where the object stops stitching. The red X here, this will show us where the previous object will stop stitching. The green X shows where the next object will start stitching. To make our design efficient, we, need, we want it best that these are lined up closely together. So with this tool, I can manually move these around. So if I move those around, it will automatically change my start and stop. Or what's cool is that if I select several of these, I can do an auto start and stop, and that will automate. See now it's um, automated so that these are the closest to each other. So I can manually move them, or I can select more than one object and do the auto start and stop but the beads edit tool will at least show us where it's happening. The next tool here is our angle line tool. This is going to show us the angle at which the stitches are sewn. So for complex fills, there's only one angle line. Um, but you can see here, so this shape right here, I have an angle line. If I move this and go to generate selection, now it's changing sideways. So for my complex fills, I just have one but for my auto satin paths, which is like my black outline shape here, I have lots because there's varying angles. So this is where I can move them all. If I want to delete one, I just hold down my shift button and click on one of these beads and it will go away. If I want to add one, I just hover over my vector line, which gives me this plus sign, and I can click and drag it over to my other side and let go. Go ahead and generate that. Next is our slice lines tool. This is for breaking up our satin stitch object. The auto satin stitch will automatically add these slice lines and angle lines, but here's where you can edit if you need to. If you move the slice lining tools, you can just pick up a bead and move them around clicking and dragging. And if I generate that selection, you'll see how we'll actually change how now my this is considered like one object with a satin path, and now this is one. If I want to delete it, same thing, hold down my shift, and it will delete. If I want to add one, just hover over here where I get a plus sign and drag it over. Let's go ahead and get that back set. There we go. Our next tool here is our edit text tool. That is for our text. So let's go ahead and lay down our text. I'll need um, a vector line. If I go ahead and choose my Bezier tool, then I can click once, hold down control button, click again, that gives us a flat line. I can edit that, like I'm going to go ahead and add a curve to this and bring, I want to add a curve, to, there we go. Let's curve it down and add text to it by clicking on text. So here, here's my text. You can see that now that it's on a curve that these are 
jumbled up together. They're like too closely pushed together. If I click on my edit text tool, it puts these yellow beads underneath it. So I can just move every bead letter by letter. So this is how I can get appropriate gapping here. So this is especially helpful for text on a curve and for script font, font. Sometimes script fonts will have uneven spacing. And so this is how you can quickly change that. Next here is our stitch select tool. This is going to allow us to examine the stitch sequence. So if I click on this head right here and click on my stitch select tool, I can actually click on one of my stitches here and then my sidebar has changes to stitch and I can actually play through here which is showing me the exact order of where my uh, needle is going in and out. So this is how I can kind of come in here and examine that closely. This one, it shows me, I have no commands, but it shows me where it's going in and out. If I play through this, here, let's go backwards. I'm playing through, you can see my plus sign is right here. It's going back and forth in this eyeball. There we go. And then when I get to my color change, it will actually tell me that I have a color change. This is also where I can uh, delete stitches if I want to, and I can also apply commands if I need to manually apply a command here. Last here, we have our start stop tool. Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit on here. The start stop tool allows you to choose where the design will start and stop. The start point is especially important because it shows the operator where to line up the design on the product. The default is to have it centered on both the start and stop. That is the most common way to line up your design. However, in some cases you may want to change that and you can here. You can set it up to start and stop in the same place which is on the one location or you can have it start and stop in different places by selecting on the two locations. If you have your design set on one location, the start and stops are displayed as a stoplight. So we have it on the center right here. If we have our design set on two locations, the start is represented by a green stoplight and the stop is represented by a red stoplight. You can set it to be at the first stitch and the last stitch, which is actually going to be like the first stitch in our design is where it will stop, start, the last stitch will be where it's going to uh, stop, or we can have it user defined. If you choose user defined, then hit OK, and then you can place your first stitch by clicking. So the first place that I click is going to be where my start location is. And then the second place I click is going to be where my stop place is. See, so here's my start, here's my stop. If I was selected on one location, I would only need to click once to set both the start and stop place. While a center start and stop is most common, there could be cases where the, you want to line up your design with a particular part of the gom, garment, like a pocket, and be able to choose where your machine will start to stitch, and that can be very helpful. And so you would do that in here. 